the opportunity of welcoming each and every one along to our service today. We welcome you here in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Savior. And especially if you're visiting with us, we give you a very special welcome indeed. Those who are joining us online, again, let me give you a welcome. And we pray that we know the Lord's presence uh, with us today. Let's bow in prayer and let's seek the Lord's face as we come into His presence today. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and we praise Thee. For many of us, Lord, we can read our title clear to mansions in the sky. We thank Thee, Lord, for that day when the Lord Jesus saved us by His grace. And we thank Thee, Lord, that we are the children of the King. And we thank Thee, Lord, and praise Thee that someday we're going to see the King in all His beauty. O oh God, we thank Thee for the blessed hope of the child of God. And we rejoice today in what our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, has accomplished for us on the place called Calvary. We thank Thee that upon the cross He shed His precious blood in order to redeem us. We thank Thee that He died the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God. O oh God, we're so thankful today for the love that drew salvation's plan, for the grace that brought it down to man, for the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. And Lord, we know today that Calvary covers it all. And O oh God, we do pray, therefore, those of us who are saved, that you would help us as we come into God's house today to rejoice in Thee, our Redeemer. Help us, Lord, to lift up our hearts and to praise Thee for what Thou, the Lord, our God, hath done for us. We'll never cease to praise Thee. We thank Thee, Lord, not only for Your saving grace, but for Your keeping grace. And O oh God, we thank Thee for added grace day by day. Lord, when we think Lord, of the trials of life, we praise Thee, Lord, that You've promised never to leave us nor forsake us. And, O oh God, we do pray that You'll come, therefore, and meet each and every one of us through Thy Word at the very point of our need this day. Remember the sick of our congregation. We do pray for those that are laid aside. We pray, Lord, that You would touch them in Thy will, that You would raise them to full health and strength again. Remember the elderly of our congregation, the shut-ins, those, Lord, who used to come to God's house because of old age cannot come now. We pray, Lord, that you would minister unto their needs. And, O oh God, may they know that we're praying for them even this Lord's day. Bless every head bowed in your presence. We thank thee for every family represented in God's house this morning. We pray, Lord, as we turn to thy word and consider thy truth, that you would encourage us and strengthen us in our faith. Build us up in our most holy faith. And even in these days, Lord, that you would bless all the work in the church here in Tandragi. Oh God, we thank thee for the young people. We thank thee for the children. We thank thee, Lord, for each and every one who comes along here and worships with us. And we pray, Lord, that all of our families would know, Lord, that they would be united in Christ even in these days. Send us a breath from heaven. Lord, we just commit this service to Thee. We pray, Lord, that You would bless us now. And to Thee, Lord, we'll be very careful to give the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Acts chapter 20. We want to read some verses from Acts chapter 20. And then I want to read some verses from Colossians and uh, the chapter 4, please. Colossians chapter 4. So when you find Acts chapter 20, find also Colossians and the chapter 4. We'll read some verses, first of all, from Acts chapter 20, and we'll read from the verse 1 of this chapter. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples, and embraced them, and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts, he had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece, and there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to sail into Syria, he pur purposed to return through Macedonia, and there accompanied him 
into Asia, Sophiter of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus, and Secuntus, and Gaius of Derby, and Timotheus, and of Asia, Tychicus, and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas, and we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unlevelled bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And then turn over to Colossians chapter 4, and I just want to read uh, verses 7 and 8 to you. I want you to underline these verses. All my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a faithful brother, a beloved brother, and a faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know your estate and comfort your hearts. Amen. We'll end our reading there, knowing the Lord will bless the public reading of his precious word to all of our hearts today. It is good to see you all in God's house this morning, and let me again give you all a very warm welcome. And again, we do pray that the Lord will meet with us around His precious Word. Just a few announcements, uh, very, very quickly. Do remember the gospel service tonight at 6.30 p.m., and the Reverend Larry Parr will be here to preach in the gospel service tonight. Pray for us. We are going to take a harvest service in Cumber, so we would value your prayers this evening as we travel down uh, to Cumber. Uh, Mrs. Naomi Wolferton will be here to sing in the gospel tonight. And don't forget the time of prayer beforehand. If you can come that little bit earlier, come and join with the folk at 6 p.m. On Tuesday night at 8 p.m., our prayer meeting and Bible study in God's will, I'll be here, and we'll be continuing with our studies in the book of James on Tuesday night. So come along, join with us, bring your Bible. We'll have our Bible study, and then we'll go down to our time of prayer on Tuesday evening. On Wednesday morning at uh, 10 a.m., the little treasure. Uh, do please remember that. And I, let me emphasize again, pre-booking again is required. So please uh, see Daphne for that. Friday night, the children's meeting recommences again at 6.30 p.m. And uh, Philip and Margaret has asked me to announce if anyone else can help, please get in touch with them uh, this week. We'd like to thank all of those who have volunteered to help again in the children's work. Do pray for this work as it starts up again, that the Lord will bless and keep His hand upon all uh, the children. And then uh, there'll be the children's meeting plus, as they call it, afterwards for uh, the older ones. Also on Friday night, the Youth Fellowship at 8 uh, p.m. And don't forget that time of prayer. Young people beforehand come that little bit earlier and join in prayer at a quarter to eight. Then next Lord's Day, the services as usual at 10.30, the Sunday school and the Bible classes, the services here at 11.30 and 6.30 p.m., and I'll be here in the will of the Lord to preach at both services next Lord's Day. The singer next Sunday evening is our brother Stephen Patterson. Stephen will be coming along to sing, uh, so do please remember that. Also, if you haven't, I think most people have got their vision magazines by now, but if you haven't, got your vision magazines, then they'll be at the door as you leave the church this morning. The women's meeting recommences on Thursday, the 21st of October at 8 p.m. So ladies, do please remember that. Ladies meeting recommencing Thursday, the 21st of October. Now at our Presbytery meeting on Friday night, there, there were a number of calls issued and accepted two students received and accepted calls uh, at our Presbury meeting on Friday night. Mr. Stephen Nelson has accepted the call to Resharkin, and Mr. Simon Anderson has received and accepted the call uh, to Ocknacloy. Do please pray for these two brethren that the Lord will bless them. Also, the Reverend Philip Knowles, who's the minister in Lewis over in England, he received and accepted a call to our church uh, in, in London. So again, remember to pray for Mr. Knowles as well. And also, just for your own information, 
at our presbytery meeting on uh, Friday night. The plans for the new Bible College, the Whitfield College of the Bible, have been passed by our presbytery. So planning permission is now going to be sought for that. And as you know, the new college is going to be built on the ground adjacent here to our own church. So do continue to pray for that, that the Lord will bless uh, that committee who are overseeing that work. And certainly the plans were very impressive indeed. Pray that the Lord will bless the, the college in, in these days, the students, the principal, and all the lecturers, and pray that the Lord will continue to bless as these plans go forward in the will of the Lord. Now, I think that's all the announcements. Have to Let us all bow in a word of prayer and ask the Lord for His help again as we come to consider God's truth. Father in heaven, we thank Thee for an open Bible today. And, O oh God, we just pray as we turn to the Word of God just now that You would have a word in season for every one of our hearts. We know, Lord, that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable to our souls. And, O oh God, we pray, therefore, fill us with Thy Holy Spirit. Take the Word of God and apply it to every soul. And, O oh God, we pray that even this day that there might be those who will come and put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Build up your own saints, Lord, in their most holy faith. O oh God, help us in these days to walk with thee. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Please turn to those two portions of Scripture that we read earlier in Acts chapter 20 and in Colossians chapter 4. In Acts chapter 20, we see Paul continuing to do the work that the Lord had called him to do. Paul here leaves the city of Athens, and for the next number of months, the apostle travels by land and sea through Asia, Macedonia, and Greece, visiting the churches that had been established by him under God in his earlier ministry. And as he does so, of course, he continues to preach Christ and Him crucified. And of course, as we've been finding out, this was Paul's object as he went on all his missionary journeys, was to spread the message of the gospel and to seek to win souls to Christ. As Paul makes his way through Asia, we read in verse 4 of a number of men who traveled with him. And take the time to read that verse again, and you'll see that there were seven men mentioned here. Some of these men, very little is said about them. But one thing is clear, all of these men were Paul's companions in the gospel. They stood with the apostle, and they sought to encourage him in the midst of the battles. They sought to strengthen his arm as he went forth to bring the message of the gospel to a world that was dying in sin. Now, although little is recorded about these men, they were men who were faithful to God and who sought to encourage and strengthen the hand of the apostle. You know, child of God, we all need to, in, to be encouraged in the heat of the battle. Always be an encourager and not a discourager. These were men who stood by the apostle. And while, as I have said, not much is said about most of them, they were men who were used of God and who were used in the work and the service of Christ. Today, I want to draw your attention very simply to one of the men that are mentioned here in Acts chapter 20 and verse 4. I want to draw your attention to a man called Tychicus. Now, he's mentioned there at the end of verse 4. I want you to underline this man's name. Now, although he's only mentioned once, in the book of Acts, he's mentioned on at least six other occasions throughout the New Testament. Very simply today, I want us to consider what the Bible teaches us about this character, Tychicus. And I pray that the Lord will take His Word and write it upon all of our hearts. There's a message here, a very simple message, but there's a message here for each and every one of us. We should never neglect 
the lesser known characters in the Bible. And even in these studies in the book of Acts, we have been emphasizing that truth. It's great to study about Paul. It's great to study about Peter. It's great to study about Philip. It's great to study about the well-known characters in the Bible when we have so much information about them. But even these lesser-known characters, there's a word in season as we study their lives as well. And I pray that God the Holy Spirit will take the Word of God this morning and apply it upon all of our hearts. As I've said, there's a message here for both saint and sinner alike. And I pray that the Lord will write His Word upon your heart today. What do we learn about Tychicus? Well, first of all, I want you to notice, and I want you to turn over to that portion of Scripture that we read earlier in Colossians chapter 4. I want you to notice that Tychicus was a beloved brother. That's how the Apostle Paul here describes this individual. He describes him as a beloved brother. Look at verse 7. It says, All my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother. Paul also describes Tychicus in this way in Ephesians 6 verse 21. I will not take the time to turn to that reference, but if you want to write it down and read it later, then I would encourage you to do that. Now, this phrase, a beloved brother, is, of course, describing this man's spiritual standing in Christ. Tychicus was not Paul's natural brother after the flesh. Now, you would know that, but he was the apostle's spiritual brother. And, of course, the word beloved tells us that Tychicus was a very close friend of the apostle Paul. But what does this description teach us? about this individual. Well, it teaches us this simple fact, that Tychicus was a saved man. He was one who was redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. He was one who had his sins forgiven. He was one who knew the Lord Jesus Christ as his own and personal Savior. Now, that's what the Lord, through this phrase here is teaching us about Tychicus. He was a beloved brother. In other words, there was a day in Tychicus's life when he realized he was the sinner, when he recognized that Jesus Christ was the Savior, and when he bowed his knee by faith and trusted the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Now, we're not told here when Tychicus got saved We're not told here when he came to a saving faith in Jesus Christ, but the very fact that the Apostle Paul describes him as a beloved brother, a brother in the faith, a brother in Christ, reveals unto us that there was a definite day in his life's experience when he came and trusted the Lord Jesus as his Redeemer. Oh, child of God, so often So often we take our salvation for granted. And yet, there's no greater blessing than to be saved uh, by the grace of God, to know that your sins are forgiven, to know that you're on your way to heaven. And isn't it a wonderful truth right at the very commencement of this study today that the Lord, through His Word and by His Holy Spirit, is reminding us again of the wonderful redemption that we have in Jesus Christ. I know that many have come in today with burdens, burdens that perhaps no one else knows about. Maybe you've come in today and you've been going through a trial this week in your Christian experience, and no one else knows about it. Oh, dear child of God, thank God there is one who knows about it, your Savior, your Redeemer. He knows the trials that you've gone through this week. He knows the burdens that have been weighing you down this week. Never, never forget that. And thank God, as we have seen oftentimes before, when we have turned to the precious Word of God, our Savior, the one who has redeemed us by His precious blood, 
He has promised that He will give us strength in our time of need. Not only will He give saving grace, and He has already given that to you and I, but He will give keeping grace, and He will add grace to grace. Tychicus knew the presence of the Lord with them. He knew and had the knowledge that his sins were forgiven, and he knew that day by day in his walk with God that the Lord would never leave him nor forsake him. He was a beloved brother. And here Paul could describe this character as one, one who had trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their own and personal Savior. Oh, my friend, let me just stop there and challenge those in the meeting, those listening on. Can it be said of you as it was said of Tychicus that you're a beloved brother? In other words, are you saved? Are you redeemed? Can you look back to that day in your life when you were saved by the grace of God? Spiritually, has your life been changed by the power of God? Can I call you brother today? Can you call me brother? Oh, I pray in Jesus' precious name that if you're still found without Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you would come and trust Him. What does it mean to be a saved man? Tychicus was a saved man. What does it mean to be a saved man or a saved woman? My, a saved man is one who is chosen, chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. You see, to be a saved man means that you're chosen, chosen in Christ. Not a wonderful thought, dear child of God, that in eternity past, the God of heaven chose you and I to be saved for time and for eternity. There's a mystery there, and we'll never understand it. But Paul clearly taught the truth that all who are saved are chosen in Christ. When? Before the foundation of the world. And not only is a saved man one who is chosen, but a saved man is one who is cleansed, cleansed with the blood of Christ. Listen to what Paul said in Romans 5, verse, eight, verse 9. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. So not only are we chosen, but we're cleansed from every sin. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. Oh, dear child of God, let us rejoice in the Lord today. Our sins, which are many, are forgiven. The old devil, you know, he'll not let us forget about our past sins, but the Lord has already forgotten about your past sins. Praise God, He has cleansed your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins. Thank God, His precious blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Our brother, when he was praying in the prayer meeting this morning before this service, quoted that verse, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. A saved man is a chosen, is chosen. A saved man is cleansed. A saved man is one who is called, called by the voice of Christ. What did Jesus say? He said this, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Listen to what John said in Revelation 19, verse 9. He said, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And child of God, you and I can identify with that very clearly. That day we were saved. The Lord called us. The Holy Spirit was striving in our hearts, and He drew us to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Oh, a saved man is a chosen man. He's a, he's a cleansed man. He's a called man. A, a, a saved man is a man who comes to Christ by faith and accepts the Lord Jesus as their own and personal Redeemer. Oh, I wonder, just before we move on, and we have much more to say, but before we move on, are you a saved man? 
Are you a saved woman? Are you a saved young person? Tychicus was, because Paul described him as a beloved brother. Oh, I pray today that each and every one gathered in God's house this morning can identify with this description, that you're a brother and sister in Christ, redeemed for time and for all of God's eternity. But I want you to turn back there to Colossians chapter 4 again, and I want you to notice something else here. I want you to notice that Tychicus was not only a beloved brother, a saved man, but I want you to notice that Tychicus was a faithful minister. In other words, he was a serving man. Look what it says there in verse 7 of Colossians 4. All my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a faithful brother and a faithful minister and a fellow servant in the Lord. Paul here describes Tychicus, and notice how he describes him, not only as a beloved brother, but a faithful minister. Now, that word minister in the Greek, it's the Greek word diakonos. And that word diakonos literally means a servant or a laborer. So you could write beside that word minister, you could write a servant. That's what it literally means. Therefore, Tychicus is described as a faithful servant of Christ. He labored faithfully for the cause of his master. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Indeed, that's what the Holy Ghost is saying through the Apostle Paul, because we must always remember that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. So while we are saying here that this is how Paul describes Tychicus, what we're really, really saying is this is how the Lord describes Tychicus. He was a faithful servant. This fact that Tychicus was a faithful servant, it teaches us a number of things, very simply, about him. It teaches us that he was a, a humble man. We see here the humility of Tychicus. He was willing to be a servant. Now, if you study the other verses in the New Testament, and even these verses here in verse 8, you will see that among the jobs that Tychicus did was he took the offerings to Jerusalem, which the church at Ephesus had collected for the saints. That was one of his jobs in the work and the service of Christ. He also was a useful messenger and representative of Paul to various churches. He carried Paul's letters, which the apostle had written to the church at Ephesus, and to the church at Colossae. And these are some of the ways in which Tychicus was a servant of the Lord. So he was a humble man. He, he wasn't afraid to do the little tasks for God. We often read about the great men of God in the Bible, and we have done it, and you have studied their lives, and we see the great things that they have done. And we often emphasize those great things, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. They must be emphasized. But don't forget about the little things that God's servants did in the Bible. Tychicus was not a Paul. Tychicus was not a Daniel. Tychicus was not a Peter. But Tychicus did and served the Lord in the way that the Lord wanted him to to serve him, and he did many little tasks. You and I would say insignificant tasks, but you know they weren't insignificant to the Lord. Oh, dear child of God, never think that the little that you're doing for the Lord is unseen of the Lord, and is not useful in the work of God, and is, don't th never think that it's not important. Tychicus was a servant, and he realized he was a servant, and he was willing to be a servant and even carrying a letter or an epistle from the lips of the Apostle Paul, from the pen of the Apostle Paul to other churches, he was willing to do that, willing to carry an offering from Jerusalem to Ephesus, the, uh, uh, from Ephesus rather to Jerusalem, to the saints 
after that offering was taken up. So it teaches us that he was a humble man, this, this phrase, minister or servant. But you know, it teaches us something else. It teaches us that Tychicus was Christ-like. Christ-like. Now, I want you to turn over just for a moment to Romans chapter 15. Keep your hand in Colossians there and turn over to Romans chapter 15. And you'll discover here that the Lord Jesus Christ is described as a minister. It says in verse 8 of Romans 15, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister. Now, I want you to underline that word minister. The word minister here in Romans chapter 15, verse 8, describing the Lord Jesus Christ, this word is the Greek word diakonos. So, it's the same word here that's describing Christ that described that describes Tychicus and Galatians. It's the same word. Thus, Tychicus is described like Christ. Tychicus was a servant. The Lord Jesus Christ was a servant. Now, we all know that the Lord Jesus was a perfect servant and that Tychicus was only a sinner saved by grace. But nevertheless, he was like Christ in this way, that he was a faithful servant, that he was a willing servant, that he was a servant willing to do what the Father wanted him to do. You know, legend has it that Tychicus died a martyr. Now, whether that's true or not, we can't be 100% sure, but one thing is sure, he was faithful as a servant in the cause of Christ, and in this way, he was like his master. He was Christ-like. You know, child of God, we're all servants, each and every one of us. We often say it from the pulpit, and you've heard it many times, we're saved to serve, but that is the truth. We're servants. And that word, diakonos, it, it really is describing all of God's people, you and I, who are saved and love the Lord. A servant, you see, will go wherever his master sends him. A servant will do whatever his master bids him. Oh, I exhort you today, as I exhort myself, let us, as we serve the Lord, be Christ-like. And let us remember, as we're serving the Lord, whether in the Sunday school or in the children's meeting or in the youth fellowship or in the session or in the committee or in the pulpit, let us all remember that we're servants. We're here because the Lord has brought us here and sent us here to serve Him. And your contribution in this church is as worthy as my contribution in this church. Your contribution is as much needed in this church as the contribution of the session or the elders. We're all workers together with Christ. We're all servants together with Christ. Well, let me just read you. In fact, I want you to turn up to this. It's Philippians chapter 2, and it reveals to us again how the Lord Jesus Christ became the servant of His people. Look what it says in Philippians 2, and what an example we have here of our blessed Savior. Look at Philippians 2 and verse 3. Here Paul writing, and he says, "'Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves.'" There's the spirit of the servant, you see, esteeming other better than themselves with that lowliness of mind, recognizing that we're only the servants of the Lord. Look at verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, the mind of the servant, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant. And made, he was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even 
the death of the cross. When we think of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was and is God, coming down from heaven, taking upon Himself the form of a man, to be an obedient servant, <coughs> to live a perfect life, and to die an atoning death upon the cross in order to save you and I. Oh, dear child of God, really what we do for Christ on this earth is very little compared to what our Savior did for us. Therefore, as we serve the Lord in the place where He has called us, let us realize that one has gone before us and sacrificed everything, that one is the blessed Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us remember that we're servants. Tychicus was a beloved brother. That teaches us that he was a saved man. Tychicus was a faithful minister. That teaches us that he was a serving man, was willing to do the work of the servant and serve others. But notice something else here. I want you to notice, thirdly, that Tychicus was under authority. In other words, he was a submissive man. Now, this is very, very important. Take a look there at Colossians chapter 4 again. Now, there's actually three places in the Bible that I can turn to show you this. If you have a pen and you want to write them down, I'm not going to read all the verses to you. There's Colossians 4 and verse 8. There's 2 Timothy 4 and verse 12. And there's Titus 3 and the verse 12. All those references is going to prove what I'm going to say about Tychicus now. And it's a very important point. You may not agree with it, but it's a very important point. But look at Colossians 4, verse 7 and 8. All my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, this is Paul speaking, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. Now underline these verses. Child of God, we need to read every verse. Don't skip over a verse. Look what it says. Whom I have sent unto you. Now underline that. Whom I have sent unto you. Now in those other two references, in 2 Timothy 4 verse 12 and Titus 3 verse 12, we read also Paul emphasizing that he has sent Timothy, or he has sent Tychicus. He has sent them. Now, where did Paul get the authority to send anyone anywhere? The Apostle Paul was the senior man, you must remember. And the Bible tells us that Paul sent Tychicus. Now, we're coming here into the realm of church government. Now, many people don't like the subject of church government. But it's in the Bible. It's in the Word of God. Hebrews 13, verse 17 is a verse that we all need to underline in the Bible. It says this, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit unto them. What Tychicus was doing... He was submitting to the authority that was over him, the God-given authority that was over him. Paul was the elder in the church. Paul was the oversight in the church, a part of that oversight. And Paul here, as the oversight, was directing Tychicus in a certain way. He was guiding him and leading him, and he was saying, right, here's this letter I've written. Tychicus, you're going to take it and you're going to bring it to the church in Colossae, and you're going to bring it to the church in Ephesus. And here's a collection we have lifted up. Tychicus, I want you. You're the man. You're going to bring it. You're going to deliver this. Paul directed him. All Tychicus was doing, you see, was obeying them that had the rule over him. And he did it with gladness because in doing it, he was obeying the Word of God, and he was being submissive to to the direction of God. All Tychicus wanted to do was to walk in the will of God. 
child of God, you cannot walk in the will of God and continually fight against the authority of God. None of us can do that. None of us. Now, I want you to turn over to that reference there in Hebrews chapter 13, and I want you to read all the verse. Now, you've got to remember that this is God's Word, and here's what the Lord says in verse 17 of Hebrews chapter 13, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. That is unprofitable for you. Tychicus was not a law unto himself. And child of God, there's none of us are a law unto ourselves. He was under authority. Now, ultimately, he was under the authority of God. But as a servant of Christ in the church, he was under the authority, God-given authority of the elders of the church, of the oversight of the church, those elders that God had appointed to oversee his work on earth. And of course, we all know as Presbyterians, we are all under authority. The membership of the church, the congregation, each congregation are under the authority of the local sessions. The local sessions and the minister, ministers are under the authority of the presbytery. The presbytery under the authority of God. Ultimately, we're all answerable to the God of heaven. But there has to be structure. That's why we have a government in the country. Now, we might not always agree with the government in the country. We might not always like, to, like the decisions that they make at times. But nevertheless, the government in the country runs the country. And the Bible tells us that we must be subject to the powers that be. In the family, there has to be order in the family. That's why the Bible says that the husband is the head of the wife and the head of the family. Now, that doesn't mean that the husband should be a dictator. He's certainly not carrying out his duty if that is the case. But there has to be structure in the family. The whole thing would go into chaos if it didn't. And it's the same in the church, in the work of God. That's what we learn here about Tychicus. He was a humble servant. He was under authority. And he was directed by Paul to do certain things. And he did them. And the Lord blessed the life of Tychicus in a most unique and marvelous way. Oh, dear child of God, let us in these days realize that the Bible teaches us clearly when it comes to these matters. And let us study the Bible ourselves and let us see what the Bible teaches us on these matters. And I'll tell you, if we all listen and obey the Word of God, then we'll have peace in the church. I mean, a lot of people doing their own thing, running their own way, but there will be a blessing. God blesses order, and God blesses discipline. And God blesses His people when His people walk according to His truth. Tychicus. Are you a Tychicus? Oh, I pray that if you're not saved, that even today you will come and put your faith in Jesus Christ. And if you are saved, dear child of God, let us be those servants of the Lord. And let us follow the example of our Redeemer. And let us walk humbly with Him and let us realize that the Lord will continue to bless us as we walk according to His Word and according to His truth. May God bless these few thoughts on the life of Tychicus. Let us all pray. Father in heaven, we thank Thee and we praise Thee for the precious Word of God. O oh God, we do pray, Lord, that You would make us all more Christ-like. O oh God, we do recognize like Tychicus, 
We're only sinners saved by grace, those of us who are saved, Lord. We just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would come, Lord, and fill us with thy gracious Holy Spirit day by day. We thank thee, Lord, for this description of the Lord Jesus. We thank thee, Lord, that he became obedient. He died upon a cross. He shed his precious blood. He came to fulfill the will of the Father. We thank Thee that that work was accomplished. Oh, God, help us in these days. Lord, You've called us to serve Thee. You've called us to preach. You've called us to be a servant, to be a witness. Lord, help us to finish the work with joy that You've called us to. And we pray, Lord, that in these days You would send us a breath of revival. Oh, God, we pray. Move by your gracious Holy Spirit. Bless as the children's work commences this week. We pray for it. Bless all those helping. Remember the Bible classes. Remember the Sunday school work. Remember the youth fellowship. Remember the mother and toddlers. Remember all the works, Lord. Oh God, we just pray that you would undertake for all these ventures. We thank thee, Lord. We thank thee so much for the faithful workers, for the faithful servants of God that we have in this house to do all this work, Lord. Oh God, as a session, as a committee, Lord, we couldn't do it ourselves. We recognize we need need the help of so many, and we thank Thee for the helpers in this house. Oh God, we pray that we go forward in the service of Christ, seeing the work of God done, Give us that unity of spirit, Lord, and help us to realize that we're all serving the one master, even our blessed Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Undertake for us now. Separate us in thy love and bring us to our homes in safety. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. God bless you and safe home.